Hey guys, Jamie here, keeping it quiet. Welcome back to the channel, and if you're new, welcome. Hope I can earn your subscription today. So, in today's video, I'm asking for your help. I've asked a few people their opinions, and I like opinions. But, I am starting to prep the area and uh, design my new ground tank. So, I'm going to uh, spin you around in a second, show you the area I've got to work with, and then show you my designs on paper, and then we can go from there. I've, I've sent these designs over to uh, Vince to have a look at. He's given me some uh, food for thought and maybe possibly make some changes. But uh, I want to share it all with you guys as well because I know that a lot of you out there that, that follow these uh, type of channels are very uh, experienced pond builders and koi keepers, shall we say. So uh, yeah, just give me some advice what you think I should do. That would be muchly, muchly, muchly appreciated. Before we have a look at the... Uh, little area over there i'm going to spin you around and we'll have a look at the new fish that we put in last week and see how they're getting on so by the pond here's one of the new ones my little one that i have no idea what he is as i say from the top if he'll go face down a bit he looks like a jin matsuba with his metallic gray pattern because there's my jin matsuba and they're almost the same color but then when he turns sideways he's got these brown scales and on the other side of him he's got some like a, a whole brown splodge of a pattern so yeah still wanting to know what he is exactly but uh, as you can see all the koi are doing all the fantastic here's the little grey ghost with the uh, slightly deformed mouth now uh, all we can see is his tail down there at the minute uh, where's everybody else As you can see, all my koi are doing uber fantastic. Oh, there's the brown one just coming up behind no name there. This guy, oh, the fins and tail on this guy. He's, he's got the biggest tail in the pond. It's actually bigger than uh, my big chagway coming up behind him, who's over double the size he is. But look at the size difference in the tails. He has got, he's not, he's not a butterfly koi, but he's, you know, he's, I just love it. Love it. So, uh, yeah, nice koi, and it's the uh, the two biggest ones are riding at the minute. Got the uh, kahaku and the uh, shower. Yes, you can have some food in a minute. It's still early, still early. But no, they're all doing great. So I'm sure the other other two will come out of the pond very shortly but let's have a look around here at what I've been up to. So obviously behind me you can see my sort of pergola old vegetable plot area and if we look down the vegetable plot is gone. There's currently a bench sat there at the minute because uh, some of you already know, um, not many of you, but uh, my partner's father died um, over a year ago now uh, and we've been clearing out his uh, well, that was been clearing out his old uh, old gaff, and this was one of the things that he had in his garden that uh, my partner wanted to keep. So uh, it will have a home eventually. But uh, yeah, just I've got some plans for the whole garden. But let me just pause you a second. I'll move the bench out of the way, and we'll discuss this uh, this pond first. So this is the area that I've got to play with, and as you can see, I kind of mapped out the size. Let me zoom out a bit. There we go. Mapped out the uh, size of what I'm going to be working with, with some of the uh, older bricks. The, these ones I've had in the garden for years. They were what was propping up the uh, vegetable plot that used to be here. And uh, yeah, so as you can see there, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bricks across, five bricks down, um, all tied in at the corners but that gives me an internal uh, measurement of 1.7 across by exactly one meter that way so it's going to be a nice little size grow on tank the window uh, is going to sit here so it's going to get an awful lot of sunlight It'll be two bricks or two and a half bricks in from that corner and then again two and a half bricks in from that corner so it'll sit there so it'll be tied in quite well, uh, just means I've got a lot of cutting of bricks to do. 
but that's not a major issue so that's the size wise it just depends on how deep I can go now obviously there's eight at the back which means there's eight at the front currently on the bottom row there at the minute so that's 16 and then you've got five there and five there that clearly makes uh, 26 so it's 26 blocks per course minus however tall I'm going to make the uh, the window and as you can see by the window there there's one two three and a half uh, three and a half bricks for the window uh, that's going to be missing from that so 26 courses to get that from ground level where it is now up to the same level as that I'm going to need 12 courses I think uh, if my maths are correct and then that's 12 times 26 which is just over 300 now the bricks I've got let's go and have a look now down the old junkyard end of the garden where all the rubbish currently is which won't be once this uh, new pond's finished but uh, they're the bricks I've got now that pile's stacked up quite high uh, how high are we from down there one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so that's as high as I need it. Now on each course of that, we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So that's almost halfway around the pond. But then under here, I've got a load more, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a half courses. So we'll just say nine for now, and that's two, four, six. So nine sixes, if my maths are good, 54. So I've got 54 bricks there. And what did I say that was there? 13 times 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 13 times 12. Right, my maths are good, but I'm going to get back to you. Right, so in total there, I've just added them all up together. There is 214 bricks there. Some of you math whizzes out there may have already worked that out. But yeah, 214 bricks there. So, that's not enough to get as high as I want. I've still obviously got all these old bricks down here. Which there's obviously 26 on the floor. 3 there, 29, 30 foot, 1 foot, 2 foot, 3 foot, 4, 35. So there's 35 on the floor. Not that you can actually see me because the light's in the wrong way. There we go. So yeah, another 35 on the floor there. That is 49. 249. And then I've got that little stack there, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Another 21 there, 249, 250, 250, 250, 250, 250, 270, plus a couple, which I don't think are really usable, uh, blocking that gap off so Nyla doesn't disappear behind that wall, because um, she can fit. Uh, but yeah, they're not really... Uh, usable so if we say 270 blocks bricks that's pretty close and what did I say I needed about 312 that's not far off so depending on how big I make this window we may just about get away with all these free bricks that I picked up off Facebook last year it's gonna be close but we'll, we'll see we'll see uh, it doesn't really matter what bricks I use down the back so any that are as long as they're structurally sound, um, any sort of dodgy looking ones I can put at the back. And uh, then if I need to buy some more and they don't specifically match, again I can put them at the back because obviously the line is going to be at the back of the pond. Copings are going to be on top of that. You're never literally going to see those bricks at the back of the pond ever again. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's the plan. That's the size anyway. Let me show you my plan on how I'm trying to do this because I've only got a certain amount of uh, electrical power and sockets that we can use here because I, I do have, let's go back over here a minute, I do have this outdoor electrical socket there that was put in years ago when I built this decking. But, uh, that's only coming off a normal plug socket in the house and it's been wired under the uh, under the decking. So uh, 
yeah my plan is to literally just get an extension cable from that use the uh, waterproof box I've got down on the blue vat down there stick that up on the wall in here and then that can power the pond because it doesn't need a lot of power but because of that I also don't really want to uh, overload it and put loads and loads and loads of plug sockets on it so my plan was one pump one UV and that was it so let me show you my plan and uh, if anyone thinks it will work or will not work or anything that could be changed let me know here's the plan yeah so here's the plan obviously the pencil lines are the pond um, bottom drain here well bottom drain would be here it just my I drew the pipe work and then tried to fit the pond in it <laughs> so I, I kind of work this drawing backwards but yeah so bottom drain in the center of the pond here coming out ball valve slide valve probably a ball valve there and then a skimmer up here now I have spoken to Vince and he said this is not the bestest of ideas in the world but because he, he said a grown tank doesn't really need a skimmer which yeah in an ideal world it doesn't but you've seen my garden there are trees everywhere and I'm still seeing leaves and those sycamore helicopter seeds in the pond and and whatnot and they just get everywhere and I've got hundreds of silver birch out the front and all that rubbish blows over millions of trees out the back so I get a lot of debris on the top of the pond so I do really want a, a skimmer if I can but so anyway bottom drain out here with a valve skimmer out here with a valve into a t-piece so I can then control what's being pulled from each because being a, such a small pond the skimmer doesn't need to pull very hard and hopefully this design will give a good flow around the pond as well so ball valve so I can control what's coming from the bottom drain and what's coming from the skimmer into a T then up into the pump uh, now I've got obviously the 10k vary pump that I'm currently using on the blue vat at the minute so the plan is to continue using that pump straight up out of there now there will be a basket in the skimmer so leaves and large debris can't get into the tempest so uh, i'll have a fine basket for in there and uh, i just want a slow flow just to keep all the crud off the surface through there anyway that's there so from the pump straight up into the tempest obviously the water from a tempest comes out and then my plan was again to put another t-piece in here um with a valve on both lines so that would then be an in-pond return to keep the flow going from around the back of the pond and then obviously the shower down this end which is coming off the other line with the valve will then help keep the flow going around in a circle fingers crossed now the idea is the bottom of the pond will be slightly sloped uh, down into the middle to the bottom drain um, so yeah that was my plan obviously a uv i can put either here in this line uh, or here in this line um i haven't drawn that on there because it depends on i would like it prefer it on this line uh, like i've done with the main pond that way if it ever did get too too cold and i had to turn the back shower off because of uh chance of freezing that kind of thing then obviously if i did need the uv on but that line was turned off obviously then it would be a bit bit buggered so plan is to have the uh oh we've gone out of focus there we go yeah have the uv if i can on this line but it depends obviously how tall and how big that line is going to be uh, it doesn't need to be a big uv um obviously the pond itself 1.7 uh, across that way um, and then one meter that way that's internal measurements and there is obviously yet to go in um because that's just what the bricks will make that's yet to go in with the insulation so i'm only going to be using 20 25 mil uh so that would be 50 mil off that end and 50 mil uh, off that end so another five centimeters off both so internal dimensions after the fiberglass i mean you're going to be looking at about 164 probably that way and 94 ish that way give or take because uh, obviously the 25 mil king span yes but then obviously you've got to stick that to the wall with summit so it's probably more like 28 mil um 
and then obviously the fiberglass is a couple of mil thick as well so that's the plan now my question to you guys is will it work can you see of anything that would stop that working because although yes it's not an ideal setup uh, ideally i would need or would want a separate pump off the skimmer um, and if that is the case and this won't work at all then i may have to bite the bullet and just buy a small uh, little pump to do that i'm not going to buy another big ten thousand uh, or expensive ea fairy pump i'll probably just get a cheaper version of and literally if that is the case then what i'd do is i'd just pull off the skimmer with the basket in there and then blow it back uh, no i can't do it that way because if i blew it back in there then i'd have no filtration if i need to turn uh, that line off in the winter Hmm. either way if i have to draw up another plan or come up with another idea i will do but that's how i would like it to run can anybody see yes it's not ideal and yes it won't work as good as if i had it on two separate pumps but would that work that's my question could it work would it work let me know in the comments below if you can be muchly 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 appreciated catch you in a bizzle Hey guys, so yeah, it's the quick comment of the week time again. Um, so today's first comment here, uh, Sharp is Koi. Uh, he's just recently changed his uh, channel name, Sharp is Koi. Great channel, lovely L-shaped pond. Uh, get over and check him out. But Sharpie's uh, about to do the same thing as I did uh, the other week. Uh, he said, I've got the same thing, mate. An old couple that has gone into a home, their family want the fish rehoming, and I've been asked to go and sort the pond and fish. Yep. Yeah. It's just one of those things, mate. We've all, we've all been there. Um, good luck with it. I hope it all goes well. Second comment of the week, David Marks. First time watcher, just subscribed. Those are some big koi. think we've had the same netting over the pond. So uh, he's obviously got the same type of netting as I've got over my pond. But uh, I'm in a flight path for herons. So uh, not had one land on or near the pond yet. But they do fly over the house quite regularly because I live quite close to Fairy Meadows. Um, anyone that knows Peterborough will know Fairy Meadows is absolutely full of herons and uh, I live relatively close to that so uh, I always need some protection over the pond but uh, thanks for subscribing David really appreciate it and a massive thank you to all my new subscribers recently as well um, things are only going to get better catch you in a bizzle yeah so back outside that's me plan hopefully you guys think it might possibly work if 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 it won't work it won't work and i have to come up with something else but that's what i would like to do please let me know if you think it will work um so yeah plans for the rest of the garden just while we're talking about plans i'm walking around with me uh, new plaque in the hand uh, again thank you very much uh, danny and koyagi but yeah when obviously i'm studying where the pond is going to be uh, at the moment and the plan is to either have that on the back wall if it fits uh, or if not up on this post here but yeah rest of the garden as you saw in my last video finally finished my uh, potting of these aces so all them are now in that's looking really really nice happy with how that's turned out i've picked up one new bonsai and uh, a lot more pots although my new bonsai is currently in a washing up tub at the minute because it had quite flat roots but quite wide roots uh, I didn't have a suitable pot to put it in so uh, I've stuck it in a really old washing up bowl at the minute drilled holes in the bottom so it's got good draining but it's another yew tree but this one is quite a thick trunk compared to all my other ones as you can see there uh, all my other little yews these are the kind of trunks we're working with with them <laughs> tiny although that one's got some real nice movement in down low down there uh, so that could turn out quite nice but uh, yeah wanted a, a slightly bigger one so I've done a bit of a, a gin to the top because of it was bulging and had some branches and whatnot so uh, I'm pretty sure the front is going to be from around this side of the tree so the gin will be on show but we'll see we'll see as i say i've only just collected it i've only just potted it up that's going to be a good three or four years before it looks any good anyway but yeah some of the new pots i've got I've got a, a collection of pots down here still I've got a couple of bonsai pots in there another little ceramic pot there bigger ceramic pot there lovely little i love this bonsai pot 
I haven't decided what tree I'm going to put in that one yet, but that's a real nice shape and size, that one, like that one. Another ceramic pot there, lovely bonsai pot here, along one so I've just, just pulled out some of the sycamores that's growing in here, There's some of them for now, uh, or filled maples, not 100% sure yet, but stuck them in there, have a little foresty effect. That's in one of the new pots as well, obviously all my old bonsais, you've seen all them hundred times before. I didn't put any of the new pots down in this section, but with some of the other sycamore or field maples, whatever they are that we're kicking about, I've done a bit of a fusion style uh, bonsai. So that is vet tape, tied it nice and tight together with a vet tape and then held it in place really tight with some wire, spread the uh, trunks out and then within about six months all them trunks will have actually fused together as they grow and that will then become one thick trunk so it's just a bit of practice uh, and see how it goes with some of them i've done another one of them as well over here on a slightly smaller scale same on my trees but just some of the thinner smaller ones and uh, the little one in the middle is very little at the minute just sticking out through there but yeah we'll see how they go um, get some nice radial roots doing that because uh, you get to pick where you want your roots obviously you still got that one there but yeah some of the other bonsai pots um, I was given them because I went to do a health check for a, a fella koi keeper from the Peterborough Koi Club um, just to make sure his koi all looked all hunky dory and whatnot which they did cheers for that uh, Kevin but uh, I didn't ask any money off him because uh, he gave me all these pots so another little one there that's part of the ceramic set that he gave me and that one and then this bigger one slightly bigger one over here with a lovely as I say this one was dug up as it is with a lovely movement in that trunk really like that so yeah we'll see how that one goes so anyway that's not the that's just something good that's happened to me uh, this week but uh, my plan and design is Obviously now I don't really have anywhere to put my veg guard. Can't really have it this side of the garden because this side of the garden has no sunlight at all any time of the year. It's the reason I put that Japanese garden there because the sun is constantly, as you can see, behind this fence over there. So no matter what time of year, that bit never gets any sun whatsoever. So putting the, the veg garden, for instance, there would be no use. So the plan is, once the pond's built and I can then work out what I need, what I don't need, sell anything that's any good, bin anything that's rubbish, clear the garden, finally. If any of you have been following from my very first video, my garden used to look lovely <laughs> once upon a time. But yeah, basically, get rid of all the rubbish and make use of anything that needs to be made use of out of this pile. And then the fake grass, turf, whatever you want to call it, that I've laid, where can we see a bit there? That's going, it's going from pretty much where this pot is, I believe, yeah. You can just see under there the uh, sleeper. So it's going from here all the way along, all the way along to those sleepers there. They're sitting on the other sleeper. So, I mean, it's not a massive area. I think it was just shy of six metres if memory serves me correctly. I think it was like 5.9 metres and it's about 1.5 metres deep. So again, not massive. But on looking at the length of that and looking at the length of that from there to the shed and the log store, that is about the same length. So my thinking is I'm going to dig up the fake grass well, not dig it up, but pull up the fake grass that's over there. I'm going to get rid of all these stones that are down here, because this, this isn't part of the patio. The patio ends here, as you can see. So all, all that in there is all just stones. Not that you can really tell, because again, there's loads more rubbish over here. But lift up all them stones, move all them, move the fake grass to that area because nothing grows there. I can't put grass there. So the fake grass can go there. That kind of then extends the patio, um, makes that sort of look and feel even bigger. And then that five meter section there, 
can be my growing section because that side of the garden gets most of the sun most of the day uh, if we get any sun here in sunny old Peterborough so it will be ideal for growing the bonsais and things like that obviously any that don't need a lot of sun can stay on this side of the garden where I'm currently stood at the minute yeah that's my plan anyway so I could have vegetable garden this side and grow me veg and then bonsais that side I mean, five meters. It's quite a, quite a way. I'm still planning on keeping a few of these uh, for the strawberries because they do quite well in them. And they're not just sitting on the ground and whatnot. You can hang them over the, over the side. So I might keep two of them and keep like a two-step uh, strawberry planter like I had when they were all over here. The rest of them that were currently over there are all sat here at the minute. So I've got another one here that's got strawberries in. Um, that isn't actually growing that's just an off cut of a tree that i accidentally snapped there's the rest of it but i have got a couple more i've got another slightly bigger one there and then three little smaller ones there that's uh, a gold crest uh, a lemon gold crest if you've never had a lemon gold crest get one they absolutely smell beautiful they just smell like lemons so yeah that's my other strawberry one anyway uh, so I'll probably keep them with me strawberries in it and then I normally grow me tomatoes in this one there's a bit of mint growing in there as well but I normally have me tomatoes uh, in this one down this end I've already got one tomato coming up but it looks like the birds or snails or something keeps eating it but uh, there's quite a few seeds planted in there so I'm hoping to get quite a few shoot up over the next few weeks yeah so keep a couple of them move them down there and then i've got the whole rest dig out all the soil again from there and fill it with compost that's my plan fill this side with compost and whatnot for the veg garden and then that side can just stay soil maybe add some uh, other materials in there just to break the soil up trees grow a lot better and have a lot higher roots in soft soil and well draining soil so put some in there so that's my plans anyway that'll make the garden a lot bigger because then all my pots and everything can be on there all this area then will be clear the patio over here will be extended so the table then be visible again the chairs are just randomly dotted around the garden there's one under there one over there and two there so literally all the pots and plants and everything will be along there that will be my growing area no other other than my few bonsais that I may dot around the pond the bonsais that I'm going to leave in here uh, in the Japanese garden obviously they can be there but for the rest of the garden other than the big trees in the big giant pots over here at the back uh, got me fruit trees and bay leaf trees and whatnot they'll stay there everything else will be gone so it'll be a nice clear garden but not until I finish this pond. one job at a time it's getting the time to to do these things that's me plans for the grow on pond and the garden obviously i'm still yet to fully fully complete this pond because i need to get the jump guards finished and then i can take that net off and um, still only got the two of them made down here yeah is what it is the only place i've got that i can cut the wood without making a massive mess of sawdust everywhere because uh, the missus ain't going to let me do it in the house don't want to do it here on the decking because all the sawdust will just go in, all the gaps and nooks and crannies um, is the lawn, basically. And the lawn has been too stodgy and wet. But yeah, main point of this video, getting back to it, is my little pond. And uh, I would really, 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 I'm just getting some food for the koi. I would really, really, really like your feedback, whether you think it's a good idea or not. Now, I'm going to spin you around while the koi have a munch. because they're obviously hungry. I think they're gonna need a bit more than that. He munched pretty much most of it. Grab another big apple for this time. There we go. Oh, he's still munching away. That chag just eats for England. Let someone else have some. I don't know why, but that Benny Kikikuru, yeah, I've had him for over, well over a year now, and he's still the most skittish fish in this pond, considering he's like the third biggest in there. Weirdo. But yeah, as you can see, the new ones are 
all up and eating. That was the little Sankey shower. This is the one that I still don't really know what it is. He's absolutely fine and munching. There's the little grey ghost. Not that you can really see him on the camera, but he is there. I promise. No, it's not going to focus doing that now. But yeah, they're all hunky dory. And uh, yeah, everything's all good. Oh, the little brown ones just there. You can just about make him out there. And the Kahaku, I have seen him. He is about. But, uh, again, obviously, they're new to the pond, so they're still a bit shy and skittish. And, uh, don't know how well tame they were in their, in their old pond, but this fella, you can literally pick him up and give him a cuddle while he's in the pond. Love him. Absolutely love him. Yeah. Right, I'm going to get some uh, food for the rest of the fishies. Get some food for these guys. They're obviously looking as well. All the other fish are eating and they're like, where's mine? Where's mine and these guys? Let's have a quick look at the fry because we haven't seen these in a, a fair few weeks. They're doing all hunky-dory. I've lost, unfortunately, another couple over the last couple of weeks. Um, a bit difficult to scrape a three-inch fish. But, uh, not seen any flicking or flashing, just occasionally come out here and see one either on the top or on the bottom. But, uh, yeah, that's what you get with fly though. Only the strongest will survive as they say. But the last one I lost unfortunately was a real nice sized chaggle, probably the biggest chaggle in there. Don't know whether it was one of my own fry or one of the ones from Adam Byer or even one of the Yashiki Boy ones. I just don't know, but yeah, they're doing absolutely brilliant in there. Bit dull today, so difficult to see them. But yeah, on that note, guys, let me know about this little pond. Would really appreciate. Ooh, what I can there. Would really appreciate any advice you've got. Really loving all your comments. Obviously, comment of the week is a, a new thing I'm trialing. It seems to be going down well. So yeah, leave me some comments, and you may be featured in next week's uh, comment of the week. Thanks again to the comments of the week from this week. Muchly appreciated, and uh, we will catch you all on the next one.